Liberation is in the form of realizing the nature of Atman. It is a relaxation and resting in one's own soul. It is based on sacred rites, penance, japa, knowledge, meditation, and virtue. Relaxation is assured at the vision of Shiva. Shiva, the merciful, removes ignorance even as the sun removes all impurities and darkness by means of its rays. When ignorance is dispelled, the knowledge of Shiva begins to function. On acquiring the knowledge of Shiva, a person achieves relaxation. He becomes gratified at the acquisition of relaxation. Again, by means of ten million japas, he acquires Brahma's region. A further ten million japas enable him to achieve Vishnu's region. By a further ten million japas, he attains Rudra's region. And by a further ten million japas, Ishwara's region is attained. Again, by a similar japa performed with concentration, he attains Kala Chakra, the first in the Shiva Loka. The Kala Chakra consists of five wheels, one being over the other. Sight and delusion, drishti and moha, constitute the Brahma Chakra. Enjoyment and delusion, bhoga and moha, constitute the Vishnu Chakra. Anger and delusion, kopa and moha, constitute the Raudra Chakra. Revolution and error, brahmana and moha, is Ishwara Chakra. Knowledge and illusion, jnana and moha, constitute the Shiva Chakra. Thus scholars have explained the five wheels of the Kala Chakra. Then, by ten crores of japas, he achieves the region of Karna Brahman. Again, by ten crores, he attains the opulence of that region. Thus, gradually attaining the region of Vishnu and those of other gods, as well as the opulences of those regions, completing assiduously the repetitions to the tune of 105 crores of times, he attains Shivaloka outside the fifth sheath. There is a silver platform there, an excellent riverbed, and a bull in the form of penance. The fifth sheath is the excellent station of the Sadyojata form of Shiva. The fourth is the station of Vamadeva. The third is the abode of Aghura. The second is the abode of Shambhu Purusha. The first is the abode of Ishana. The fifth is the place of Dhyana Dharma, the virtue of meditation. The abode of Balinath is the bestower of the full Amrita, nectar of deathlessness. Thereafter is the fourth Mandapa with the deity of the Chandrakeshara form of Shiva. The abode of Soma Skanda is the third Mandapa. The faithful say that the second Mandapa is the Nritya Mandapa. The first Mandapa is the abode of Mula Maya, primary delusion, and is very auspicious and stationed there itself. Beyond that is the Sanctum Sanctorum, the auspicious place of the phallic form of Shiva. No one can realize the flourishing power of Shiva stationed at the back of Nandi. Nandishwara sits outside and repeats the five-syllabled mantra. This knowledge has come down from the preceptors. I got it from Nandisha. Beyond this, it must be inferred, and it is actually experienced only by Shiva. The full grandeur and greatness of Shiva Loka can be known by anyone only out of the grace of Shiva and not otherwise. So say the faithfuls. Thus, the brahmanas of controlled sense organs become liberated gradually. I shall tell you the process in some other cases. 
Please listen attentively. Brahmana women must take instruction from a preceptor and perform the japa with namaha at the end. They shall repeat the five-syllabled mantra 500,000 times for their longevity. That is the rule. Again, they must repeat it 500,000 times to wipe off womanhood. Becoming a man first, the liberation will be acquired gradually. A kshatriya must repeat the mantra 500,000 times to remove kshatratva. A further repetition of 500 times enables him to become a brahmana. After the mantra siddhi, he shall gradually become liberated. A vaishya dispels his vaishyatva by 500,000 japas. Then he becomes a mantra kshatriya by repeating it 500,000 times. He then dispels the kshatratva by 500,000 japas. He then becomes a mantra brahmana by repeating the mantra 500,000 times. A sudra, repeating the mantra with namaha at the end 2,500,000 times, becomes a mantra brahmana pure enough for liberation. If one is sick, whether man or woman, of brahmana caste or otherwise, one must repeat it always with namaha in the beginning or at the end. As for the women, the preceptor shall instruct them in proper order. At the end of every 500,000 japas, the aspirant shall perform Mahabhishek and Naivedya. He shall worship devotees of Shiva for gratifying Shiva. Shiva becomes delighted at the worship of his devotee. There is no difference between Shiva and the devotee of Shiva. He is Shiva himself. The mantra is also of the nature of Shiva. By holding the mantra, the physical body of the devotee becomes identified with Shiva. Devotees of Shiva know all the rites, nay, all the Vedic rites. The more an aspirant repeats the mantra of Shiva, the greater is the presence of Shiva in his body. For the woman devotee of Shiva, the symbol of the goddess shall be the form for concentration. The presence of the goddess continues to be felt as long as the mantra continues to be repeated. An intelligent man who continues to worship Shiva becomes worthy of his name and form. Even when the aspirant has become Shiva, he shall worship the goddess Para. He shall worship Shakti, the embodied and the phallic form of Shiva faultlessly after making images of the same. He shall consider the phallic form as Shiva and himself as Shakti, or he shall consider Shakti Linga as the goddess and himself as Shiva, or he shall consider Shiva Linga in the form of Nada and Shakti in the form of Bindu, and give the primary or secondary character to either or consider both united together. Whatever be the form of upasti, worship, he shall worship both Shiva and Shakti. He becomes Shiva by virtue of his basic realization. With the sixteen forms of service and homage, he shall worship devotees of Shiva, who are verily the mantra of Shiva personified or identical with Shiva. He will thereby achieve whatever he desires. Shiva, being highly pleased with him, yields to his gratification. Without being deceptive in regard to money, body, mantra, or the conception, he shall gratify five, ten, or a hundred couples of Shiva's devotees by feeding them and rendering them other services in the company of his wife. He will assume the form of Shiva and Shakti and will not be born again. If anyone dies, the householder shall worship the primordial father, Shiva, the primordial mother, Shiva, and the devotees of Shiva. Thereby, whether the dead body is properly cremated or not, the dead man shall go to the world of the manes and gradually attain salvation. A person endowed with tapas, is far better than ten persons endowed with rites. A person endowed with japa is superior to a hundred persons endowed with tapas. A person endowed with the knowledge of Shiva 
is superior to a thousand persons endowed with japa. A person endowed with meditation is superior to a hundred thousand persons who have knowledge of Shiva. A person endowed with the power of samadhi is superior to a crore of meditating persons. The latter shall be selected for worship. Even sensible persons cannot fully comprehend the excellence of benefit. An ordinary man cannot understand the greatness of the devotee of Shiva. The worship of the devotee of Shiva is on a par with the worship of Shiva and Shakti. He who worships any of these piously becomes Shiva and attains Shiva. He who reads this significant chapter that agrees with the Vedic injunctions becomes a Brahmana endowed with the knowledge of Shiva and rejoices in the company of Shiva. O scholarly lords of sages, a person who knows special things must narrate them to the devotees of Shiva. By Shiva's grace, he will be blessed.